What's up guys? My name is Jake and you're watching Reality Middle School Online. Today, right before we go into Thanksgiving break, I want us to start a new series. And honestly, it's one that had I really realized what it was going to be um, when I made my calendar, we probably would have done it earlier in the year. But I think this is going to be cool. It's going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do, and we're calling it Epic, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the next three weeks and go over at like a 30,000 foot view the story of the Bible. And really, there's going to be a second part to this that comes in the spring, so it'll be six weeks in total. Um, but we're going to do the Old Testament first and then jump into the New Testament. And so I just want to jump into it. I got a lot of stuff to say here, but I hope it'll be interesting. I hope it'll be something where maybe it helps you understand the Bible better and gives you something to think about for your own life. So we all know at the very beginning of the Bible, the way that it starts, right? It starts in Genesis 1.1. Then God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? Very, very popular verse, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Now, two things here. The first is, in the beginning, God. This is super subtle, but super important. Before anything else was, God was. He's outside of time, he's outside of space, and that's important because well, he's powerful. He just and he sees things. He operates in ways that are different from how we do. But then to the next thing, waters over the the surface of the waters. In the Old Testament and Hebrew uh, literature, water is a picture of chaos. It's not formed. It's it's just kind of crazy. There's no order to it. So out of not out of nothing, but out of chaos, God creates something beautiful. He creates life. And it is a very, very beautiful thing. And as we read through Genesis chapter 1, we see him create the sun and the moon, the birds, the, the earth, the oceans, the fish, all of the animals. And then on the, on the sixth day of creation, God gets to the very best part of his creation. Here's what it says, Genesis 1 verse 26. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So this is really interesting, right? Because we talk about this decently often, how we're made in the image of God, but I don't think we talk near enough about what that means. And so there's two really main things that I want to hit on today that that means. The first is God is is kind of defined here, not defined, but he's he's shown here to be we. He's like in relationship and it's the, the doctrine of the Trinity, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's really tough to understand, but that's who God is, and He's revealing Himself that way at the beginning. So in our image means they're able to have humans, us, we are able to have relationships. But then there's this other thing that I think we get a little bit nervous about, so we don't really talk about it. Let us create them to rule over the earth, the the animals, the birds, the fish, all of the livestock and wild animals. So basically what's happening is God has created mankind to live in relationship and to partner with God to rule creation. And what that basically means is to bring about, to take all of the potential, the raw potential of earth and make it into something beautiful. That's pretty special, isn't it? That's kind of cool, actually, if you ask me anyways. And so that's that's it. That's creation. That's how we were created to be. And we see within that relationship side, there's really four different types of relationships that we see in, in Genesis that we're created for. The first is our relationship with God. The second is our relationship with ourselves. 
and then our relationship with other people, and then our relationship with creation. And at the very, very beginning, it's all very, very good. Perfect, even. In fact, God himself says in Genesis 1.31 that it was very good. And then in Genesis chapter 2, we see this picture of man in the garden. And it's this idea of shalom. It means peace. But it doesn't mean absence of conflict peace. It means, it means that, but it also means everything is exactly as God intended it to be. It's all whole. It's perfect. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? In Genesis 2.15, we see the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend over it and to watch it. But the Lord warned him. Because here's the thing, right? We, we kind of know this. Order, if I'm going to have a, a world that has order to it, I need, well, I need order, right? If it's going to be perfect, it needs to have order. And order goes by this other name a lot. And the name is rules. In the Garden of Eden, no, there's only one rule. Verse 16 of Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God warned him, You may eat freely of the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat this fruit, you will surely die. Basically, God is saying to Adam, Hey, Adam, everything's on the table for you. You will partner with me in ruling the earth. But I got to tell you, if you eat the tree in the middle of the garden, death will enter the world. Adam, you don't want that. Adam, you've got to obey me about the tree. That's it. That's all I ask. Obey me about the tree. For the sake of time, I'll cut straight to it. We know the story, right? Adam and Eve, his wife Eve, they didn't obey God about the, the tree. They got allured by its fruit, how it looked delicious. There was a serpent that that tempted them with it and said, Did God really tell you? No, nah, that's a lie. You're not going to die. But the thing is, is when we read in Genesis chapter 3, what we find is that when they eat of the fruit, something changes right away. And we see this picture of God walking through the garden. And he says to Adam, Adam, where are you? And it's not that he lost him. It's that Adam was now hiding from God. He was, he was feeling shame and fear. Oh no, God's coming. He's going to know I ate from the tree. He's hiding himself from God. The thing that I forgot to mention is that before this, Adam and Eve were walking through the garden naked. Now that could be awkward or it could be important because it means, right, if we're naked, I'm vulnerable. There's nothing I'm hiding from anybody. There's nothing hidden between me and God, nothing hidden between me and other people. But now all of a sudden, Adam is hiding from God. And so we see there's a, a fracture in the relationship between him and God. And, and God asks Adam a simple question. Adam, did you eat of the fruit? Because Adam says, I'm, I'm naked, I'm afraid. right? And that tells us the other thing. He's feeling ashamed and naked. And God's like, who told you you were naked? But you see the fear, you see the 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 shame, the embarrassment, Adam's relationship with himself is also broken. And then his response to God's question, God, or Adam, who told you you were naked? This, this kind of brings it to the next relationship, right? Adam says, well, I ate the fruit that the woman that you gave me, she ate the fruit and then I ate it and then I saw that I was naked. So he's shifting the blame to Eve, right? The first time that we see the blame game. So before, before sin, before Adam went his own way, fear, shame, embarrassment, blaming, none of that stuff existed. We see it all for the first time right here. And we see that his relationship with God, his relationship with himself, and his relationship with Eve are all fractured. And then God, as he's kind of going through the consequences of their actions, says the ground, Adam, cursed is the ground because of you. His relationship with creation is shattered. And that's the thing. When we go our own way, chaos is what follows. 
when we go our own way, when we do what we want to do, the result is chaos. It's devastating. And as we go on through the story, it would be, honestly, it would be awful if that's where it ended, but it's not where it ends. It ends with a glimmer of hope. In Genesis 3, God says to the woman, to Eve, that through her, the the snake and her offspring are going to kind of have this tense relationship and that the the snake is going to strike his heel, but the son is going to strike the, sa- the snake's head. So it's this kind of picture of, hey, look, this is all going to be brought full circle. right? God looks at his shattered creation and says, no, 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 I'm going to put the whole thing back together. I'm going to give there's this piece of hope that, hey, this whole, is, this whole thing is going to be made new again. He's going to restore all of it. And so I want us to think today about the relationships in our life, our relationship with God, our relationship with ourselves or with other people or creation, right? Which of those needs most restored in you? They're all connected. You can't have you can't have a great relationship with God without also having a great relationship with other people. You can't have a great relationship with other people without having a great relationship with yourself, a love for self. And I I would argue you can't have a great relationship with yourself without also loving creation because, hello, you are creation. It's all intertangled. But which one do you need restoration in the most? I want you to think about that. Do you talk negatively to yourself? Do you have an active relationship with God? Do you gossip about other people or bully them or, or just act in apathy towards them? What are your relationships like? Which one needs the most restoring? And let's talk about that in small group. Thanks for joining us, guys. We will see you after Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.